Creepshow Series 1 to 3 have just been released on Blu-ray and DVD, just in time for Season 4 to start streaming on Shudder. And just like the films before them, being scared has never been so much fun. Right from the start of season one, the creep sets the scene. He's intentionally fake looking and he's got that same cackling laugh. And he goes to open a crate, a crate that contains a load of Creepshow comic books. Yes, indeed, this is a continuation of the Creepshow movies, which began in 1982. And if you like those films, you're gonna love these. I think they're actually better than movies. I've only seen the first two, I haven't seen the third. And if there are any others after that in 2006, I certainly haven't seen those. But I thought this was great fun, all three series. I do think the first is the best, but the best episodes are possibly in season two and season three. So there's much to say about all of them really. But let's start off with the image quality. As I've said before, brilliant. It's the best of Blu-ray. It's got overly rich colours, I feel. At least it does in here on my system. Not so much on the telly. We've watched a few on there. But it looks fantastic in here. And with the surround sound, the DTS HD surround sound, the atmosphere is truly set. Yes, I think this is a great series. $29.99 for each series on Blu-ray and $24.99 on DVD. I just like the look of them right from the start. I thought, oh yes, Creepshow as a series uh, is really going to work. And as I've said, I think these are better than the movies. Many of you will know the name Greg Nicotero from the Walking Dead series. He's the man behind this, and he wanted to recreate what he knew from when he was younger. So George Romero, Stephen King, a whole lot of them are involved in these series. And wouldn't you know it, Adrian Barbo is the star of the first episode. That really does put you on your way and you know you're reliving, I suppose, your youth with the Creepshow movies, albeit in this streaming Shudder series. The second episode I think is one of the best. It's called The House of the Dead and it's about a doll's house. Yes, a haunted doll's house. I think it's a classic and if you don't enjoy that one then maybe this series isn't for you. But I don't think there are many people who won't. It's great fun. The little girl in it is brilliant. The dolls are brilliant. Everything about it I think and that does set you up for what is to come afterwards. Now going through what comes afterwards in season one. I think the certification of 15 is just about right. There is some bad language in these, some quite bad language at times, which possibly wasn't necessary. But I suppose if you're over 15, you're pretty used to hearing all that sort of thing now. Episode two of season one is a bit of a takeoff or a throwback to Dog Soldiers. So if you like that film, you're sure to enjoy this. It's crazy, it's good fun. But I think the second part of that episode, because most of these, apart from a couple within all three series, are anthologies. There's two stories in each one. I think the second story in that is even better. And then we come on to episode three, and it carries on in pretty much the same vein. But this one contains the most wonderful Halloween story. A group of teenagers, and one of them, one of the six slightly younger, they return to their town on Halloween. It's just got a great atmosphere. The whole series has really, but this one is extra special. And I think that wraps up disc one of season one. And I do think that disc overall is probably the best of the lot. And with that Halloween story, with Halloween coming up, is there any better purchase at this time of year? So I'm recording this in October, 2023. This two of season one contains some particularly creepy stories, some great stories. There's a scarecrow that comes to life. There's a town that seems to turn on each other and you don't know why until the story moves on a bit. <laughs> it turns out to be one of those zombie holocausts. There's a monkey's paw that grants three wishes and that never ends well, that sort of thing, does it? So I think series one was a great series. It was bound to spawn a series two and of course it did and here it is on Blu-ray. Now this one starts off with another great story. I think this first episode in season two may be the best of the whole three series. It starts with a creep opening a trunk with his cackling laugh, of course, and in this trunk are a load of mock-ups of Super 8 horror reels and the old style castle boxes. And this starts the story or introduces a story of a young boy who loves his Super 8 horror reels and watches them 
on a Super 8 projector. That's clearly standard 8, but to forgive them, they've used it for that more vintage look. And he watches these films with his mother. He loves monsters and monster movies. And of course, they're bound to come to life in this one, aren't they? <laughs> and that's exactly what happens. They're great. They're hokey, old looking 1950s type of monsters, and it just works perfectly. The follow-up of this in episode one is Television of the Dead. And if you like Sam Raimi's The Evil Dead, I think you're going to enjoy this one. I think there was a certain book that appeared in The Evil Dead, and you might just see it in this. Anyway, a great episode to start off Creepshow season two. And it carries on, there's a guest house story, a guest house that was formerly owned by a grandma who was a serial killer. Then there's a space story that's sort of 1950s like space with a bit of 2001 A Space Odyssey thrown in for good measure and a bit of a monster movie within that as well. Then there's Denise Crosby starring in a scientific sort of thing that's a bit of a, an homage I suppose to John Carpenter's The Thing. There's a pest controller story starring Keith David. Now, where do we know him from? And there's a vampire story, a rather hilarious vampire story that I'll be choking with laughter at one point, but I won't go into more detail of that. Might not be everyone's humour, I suppose, but it tickled my fancy anyway. So season two, it's another great season. And I think many of you will think that the best episode of the lot is the Night of the Living Late Show. This is one story within this episode. I think they knew they had something really special with this one and it's about an inventor who's invented a sort of coffin come sunbed that can actually put you into your favourite movies. Now, the inventor chooses Horror Express for various reasons, and he really does get put into the movie. It's extremely well done. There's a couple of effects where you can tell he's not really there, but that's the style of this series, isn't it? It's the style of Creepshow. But I think that's wonderful, a great episode. I think most people are going to love that one. And if you only choose to see one episode of Creepshow, that might be indeed the one to look at. There are a couple of special episodes to conclude season two, the first of which is a cartoon. I didn't really get on too well with that one, but many people will probably like that enormously. And then it's followed up by a holiday special. <laughs> I suppose it went out at Christmas. It's sort of an evil Santa Claus who's thrown in with some werewolves and things like that. I didn't get on particularly well with that one. I think yeah, Santa Claus being evil rather adversely affected me a bit because he's always been very good to me, but probably a lot of fun for most people if you've seen films like Black Christmas, because I suspect there's something out there that is the influence for this episode, and a lot more of you will probably know what that is. And so we're on to season three. And this season opens with an episode called Mums, a mother who might be sort of buried in the garden and the fertilizer or something there brings her back to life so you know what to expect with that one and an episode called queen bee about a pop star who seems to mesmerize everyone <laughs> of course it turns out she's not entirely human but when some fans go to see if they can spot her in the hospital when she's having a baby watch out for the name of that hospital i think it's called something like haddonfield mars hospital you certainly know where the people who have made this series got their influence from and got their love for this sort of thing from and that's great to see and then the second episode, I think it's the best of the lot on this season. It's about a movie prop collector. He's got his own museum and the rival movie prop collector is played by James Remar. Great to see him in so many things nowadays and what a terrific voice that man has got, a terrific presence. And he really brings something special to this first episode. And then another standout episode, Time Out. I thought this was going to be a sort of Chronicles of Narnia because it's a magic cupboard, but you don't go off to Narnia in this one. You go in here and time almost stands still. So if you want to study and really swat up on things, you can go in here, take as much time as you'd like. And outside, only a few seconds or a few minutes has gone by if you've been in there for several days. That was a tremendous episode. What a great concept. I don't think I've actually seen that played out in anything else, but I suppose it's got an homage to something out there. But then we have more standout episodes with the final two stories in the last episode. We have Drug Traffic starring Michael Rooker, and he's always good in everything. And then a black and white episode, and you're watching it thinking, why is this black and white? It's called A Dead Girl Called Sue. 
and you soon find out that you're watching something set on the same night as Night of the Living Dead. And in fact, during that story, you see the news broadcast on the old style televisions, then the same news broadcast you were seeing in Night of the Living Dead. So it's the same time period, the same story, just a different location. And if you like Night of the Living Dead, and I love that film from a rather young age, then you're gonna love this final episode of season three. There are some extras dotted around on each of these series. The only thing I watched all the way through was a Comic-Con thing, which was during the COVID years, so it was done as a Zoom call and there were six of them on that. It was quite interesting, not as interesting as it would have been if there had actually been a Comic-Con on a panel. But there's commentaries, there's all sorts of other things, so there's bound to be some more things on here for me to get my teeth into. The image quality, as I said, I thought it was excellent. Sound, I thought, complemented it perfectly, particularly with a creep doing his cackling laugh in here and it kind of all the way around. I just thought that was wonderful. So highly recommended. If you look at what you get compared to an individual film, you've got three times that probably, maybe even more than that in each of these packs. So anyway, I think that brings us to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and perhaps consider subscribing so I'll be encouraged to carry on creating content like this. Until the next video, bye-bye for now.